So the patient starts screaming. It's everybody's worst nightmare. Nobody wants to have a procedure and to be able to feel it. And no one's coming to help you. The patient started screaming more. And the doctor still kept doing the procedure. And what I'm going to say how this turned out next, you're not going to believe this. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Andrea O'Connor. Thanks for checking my channel out. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button. And if you like the video um, and you like this type of content, please hit the like button. I thought it was really important to share this story because I couldn't believe it when I read it. You know, I get the latest medical information on my news feed because I am a practicing physician, so it helps keep me in the know what's going on. And I can't believe this happened. So I'm, I practice really conservatively. Like, you know, if I'm going to prescribe a medication, I do the lowest dose possible. I'll even go lower sometimes than the manufacturer recommends. And for testing, I'm extremely, extremely careful because, you know, I don't want anyone to get a side effect or feel pain or have a poor outcome. And that's why this story I'm going to tell you is mind-blowing. At the end of the video, I'm going to let you know what you can do to avoid this situation. So, you know, just a normal routine procedure. This patient called up the doctor's office and scheduled a routine colonoscopy. Now, you know, most people, they don't want a colonoscopy. I mean, think of all the procedures people don't want to do. They don't want to get their teeth worked on, a cavity drilled. Uh, You know, women don't want to have a pap and pelvic exam. And most people do not want a colonoscopy. I don't think I've ever had a patient say, Hey, Doc, when are you scheduling my next colonoscopy? Yeah, that that just doesn't happen. So it's already a procedure really nobody wants to do, but, you know, it's what's recommended for, you know, depending on family history and whatnot. So you go ahead and you schedule the colonoscopy. Well, this patient scheduled it, regular doctor with lots of decades of experience, He's got his staff. It's an outpatient ambulatory medical center. You know, it's in the United States. Like, everything's on the up and up. So, you know, the patient's like, okay, you know, this is good. Routine colonoscopy. Everything's going to be great. They're giving him medication, uh, filling out paperwork, and the procedure begins. And so the patient's like, uh, okay, I'm, I'm feeling that. Now, what I'm saying now is what I'm imagining that happened based on the facts I've read. So the patient's like, okay, I'm kind of feeling that. Uh, yeah, that's not really comfortable. Maybe it'll get a little better. And it doesn't. Um, because as you know, there's a little camera and there's a little scope. And, and with a colonoscopy, it has to get pretty high up there. Uh, and he's feeling this. He's, did, did I not get enough pain medicine? Uh, the staff is seeing his discomfort thinking, well, maybe he's not fully anesthetized. And the doctor keeps performing the procedure and the patient starts screaming. The patient is yelling and screaming. The staff is telling the doctor, I I think we need to, you know, stop. We need to stop this procedure. The procedure continues. The doctor still is doing the colonoscopy and this patient can feel it. I I, I don't (laughs) think most of us can agree that's my worst nightmare or your worst nightmare. And the bizarre part is the doctor was uh, you know, there was a complaint in, the health department investigated him, and his defense was he didn't have his hearing aids in. He didn't have his hearing aids in, so he couldn't hear the patient screaming, even though his staff was alerting the doctor to stop the procedure. This wasn't a new doctor. This is a doctor with over 30 years experience. I don't understand how something like this can happen. <laughs> I just, I just couldn't believe the story. I I just had to share this. And so what am I taking away from it? Well, this doctor actually ended up having another incident happen with another patient where he let his surgical tech insert the probe, do the colonoscopy, snare the polyp, remove the polyp. You're not allowed to do that as a surgical tech. You have to be a licensed medical doctor. So there was already some nefarious stuff going on. So I feel awful for this patient that felt that colonoscopy. And you would think if you're screaming during a procedure, like someone would do something. We, we monitor vitals. We're looking at the patient. We're monitoring everything. I can't imagine what went wrong there. Now, I wasn't in the room. I'm dramatizing what could have gone on. So, you know, maybe only lasted 10 seconds, five seconds. 
uh, five minutes? I don't know. The fact is the patient complained, complained that he was yelling and screaming. He felt the colonoscopy and it didn't halt right away. That, that's, that's all I need to know. But here's what you can do to not be in the same situation, right? There are things you can do to avoid this. Number one, talk to your doctor about, you know, why exactly are you referring me for a colonoscopy? What's my family history? How is my health? What other tests are available nowadays? You know, there's some really great tests available nowadays. Um, Fecal occult blood testing, that's really an old test. It's taking a stool sample and see if there's any microscopic blood in there. Well, that's one thing that um, patients can talk to their doctor about. Those tests are actually available over the counter now. So that's really interesting. But my opinion is once you're finding blood in the stool, that means there's already something advanced going on. But there are new tests that draw blood and even look at stool to look for the DNA signatures of um, a cancer mass tumor polyp starting. And once those tests are positive, it can give an indication to your doctor whether to send you for perhaps a CT, an MRI, colonoscopy. And there's even a sigmoidoscopy. There are less risks for tears and ruptures with sigmoidoscopy. So you could talk to your doctor like, do I absolutely have to have the colonoscopy? Could I have the sigmoidoscopy instead? A lot less risk. I was trying to look up the statistics. What is the risk of tears and ruptures during a colonoscopy? And it's less than 1%, but that risk goes down much further with sigmoidoscopies. And there's also double contrast barium enema imaging. I talked about CT colonographies. So there are other ways besides rushing right into a colonoscopy. Now, don't don't get me wrong. Colonoscopies have saved many lives, but they are not risk-free. The risk of um, rupture of the intestinal or colon wall, a tear, which can create bleeding. And especially if the person's on blood thinners, that's not a good mix. And um, discomfort, if air is introduced into the bowel, um, bowel changes, abdominal pain after procedure. And so colonoscopy is no joke. On top of not being fully medicated or anesthetized like that patient, that's inexcusable, in my opinion. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I would never let that happen. I just feel so bad for that patient. But it's always good to have a talk with the staff before you're getting anesthetized like, hey, it takes a lot of medication to put me under. And hey, are you going to be in the room so I can let you know if I'm feeling something? Like feel confident with your doctor. And if your doctor wears hearing aids, make sure they put their hearing aids in. It's probably not the worst idea in the world. Well, thank you again for being on this video and I will see you on the next one.